So let's move on to day eight now. Let's update this because I got 14, yay. Okay. Uh, handheld halting, okay. Your flight to the major airline hub reaches cruising altitude without incident. While you consider checking the in-flight menu for one of those drinks that come with a little umbrella, you are interrupted by the kid sitting next to you. Their handheld game console won't turn on. They ask you if you can take a look. You narrow the problem down to a strange infinite loop in the boot code, your puzzle input. Ah, cool. A little bit of assembly. Uh, your input of the device. You should be able to fix it. But first, you need to be able to run the code in isolation. The boot code is represented as a text file with one instruction per line of text. Each instruction contains of an operation and an argument, a signed number like plus or minus, okay. ACC increases or decreases a single global val uh, value called the accumulator, okay, by the value given in the argument. For example, ACC plus seven would increase the accumulator by seven. The accumulator starts at zero. Okay, I need to start uh, writing some of this stuff down, I think. But uh, yeah, okay. Um, after an ACC instruction, the instruction immediately below it is executed next. Jump to the new instruction relative to itself. Okay, the next instruction to execute is found using the argument as an offset from the jump instruction. For example, jump plus two would skip to the next instruction, uh, would skip the next instruction. Jump plus one would continue the instruction immediately below it. And jump minus 20 would cause the instruction 20 lines above it to be executed next. Okay. So this will just take the cu current index and modify that. NOP stands for no operation. It does nothing. It just removes, uh, incre uh, increments the, the, the stack pointer, right? Um, okay, for example, considering the following program, oh, it also has arguments, the knob, okay, that's funny. So probably, is there a knob with, okay, so probably in part two there will be uh, something with those knobs, but who knows. Um, so ACC becomes one, then we go to four more, so one, two, three, four, ACC becomes two. Then we jump back four, so one, two, three, four. Uh, it becomes five. One, two, three, it goes to six. This is an infinite loop, right? Yeah. Okay. These instructions are visited in this order. Okay, did I miss something? 2,8, wait, what? Hold up, what is this? 2,8 with an exception. Okay, I'll have to read. First and up does nothing. Then the accumulators increase from one to plus one. Yes, jump sets it to another. Okay, making it plus two. Uh, let's see. Uh, it increments itself by that value, or what? No. Let's see. Uh, yeah, then it goes to the other. What is the, the number behind? Hmm. The eight there is that it's visited again on step H, with it, which is the problem. Ah, okay, that was the infinite loop that I did in my head. No, okay, cool. I didn't read far enough. Okay, thank you. Um, this is, uh, after it increments accumulator from one to two, human four executes, setting the next instruction to the only plus four. It sets the accumulator to five and jump in three cluster points to continue back at the first. Okay, this is an infinite loop. Uh, with this sequence of jumps, the program will run forever the moment the program tries to run any instruction a second time you will know it never terminates. Immediately before the program <coughs> would run the, uh, the instruction a second time, the value in the accumulator is five. Run your copy of the boot code. Immediately before the instruction is executed the second time, what value is in the accumulator? Okay. 
that should be that should be doable okay let's do this okay we can just close all this so we do static int day eight um and we can st stop the execution Just do this. So we can do string uh, operations equals all that. We do day eight. Okay. Oh, what did I do? I collapsed. No, I haven't put it on. Okay. Int result is zero. Return zero. Uh, <laughs> return new result. And we can actually call it ACC because that's the thing we want to do. Hey Z, good morning, welcome. Um, it's operations, that's operations. So we can do a hash set int uh, previously executed blah because we don't want to do stuff twice. Um, and we can do index is zero two. Um, <coughs> so let's see. The arguments are all just. Th Three, then followed by a plus or minus and a number. Okay. So we can just uh, do all the lines here. Uh, okay, let's go uh, const string cd. Uh, we can say jmp is name of jmp. Uh, acc is name of acc. Unnecessary sign, okay, sure. Uh, and we have a nop command, okay. Nop, okay. It doesn't really like that. Look of her is already. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the. Okay. Okay, I'll just call it result. <laughs> Let's just do that and have the commands like that. So we do um, while not uh, previously executed that contains index. Um, and we do uh, string. we can do uh, string command um, uh, string value info is operations index dot split uh, space on that uh, then I would still do Info, and we can do a string, string right parts, parts equals that. Info is parts zero, parts one, and now we have named values which I like. Um, I advise you to don't declare initialized multiple values on the same. Yeah, that's just personal preference. Uh, oh, and there goes my oh, this guy. That fell off the monitor, so bye bye, it's trying to kill me. Um, so let's see, info. Um, what was I doing? Right, uh, switch info dot command case uh, no make case GMP break. Is uh, ACC break <coughs> default throw new argument exception invalid command uh, inf 
with a command. Actually, it's a not supported exception. <clears throat> um, let's see. So if uh, it's not, we just plus plus index. Uh, if it's jump, we do index is in the uh, actually it's plus equals um, we can just uh, if uh, info dot command zero plus let's see So let's do that. If that is increment, uh, we do um, we can do int of uh, no, let's see. We can do if int dot try bars. Um, Out int offset else throw new argument exception invalid offset. Uh, for the command, uh, no, it would be the value in this case. I should probably just call this offset. All right, okay. And we do index plus equals offset. Okay, that is good. Uh, and ACC, this will increment the value by the given result. Um, this will also be the same, right? There's just pluses and minuses, or it will just increment, increment or decrement. Okay, so to make sure to not have a decrement value in the example, but I'm pretty sure it will be in the output. Um, actually, I can do this here and just do a if not. And here we just do index this is offset. And here we can do result. Uh, result plus is offset. So this should work. Let's hijack the original. Uh, let's hijack the original uh, example. Now, what I always do is just run it and execute and uh, <laughs> check after console that right line. Result before, let's see, result before oh, uh, loop at index result. So um, this will make sure to break once we encounter the first. Um, uh, this will break once we encounter the first repeating index, which will also make sure that we don't execute that uh, operation. So this should be it. I'll uh, address the comments in a bit. Let's just see if we can get this first. Uh, I know what I did wrong. Uh, I didn't increase the index in ACC. <coughs> So, okay, I have another mistake, I think. 
let's uh, check. What's the current index actually? Index is zero and it wants to go to minus eight. Uh, no, it's ACC minus eight. Okay. So this will be from zero to minus eight. That's right. Index increments. Oh, I don't uh, actually add the index. Right. I need to add the index that we're processing and now it should work. Okay. 2080. Boom. So let me check uh, the questions. Scary result is important. Uh, why not just pass the string to int? Parse deals with the plus and minus. Okay, I didn't know that uh, if the, the plus would work. So I figured I might as well check. So uh, yeah, if that also works right away, that, that's fine. But I figured I'd, uh, uh, I'd be sure. Uh, but yeah. So I just didn't know that it would also uh, do the, the parse on the, on the plus. Okay, let's drink a sip of coffee. This is a better start than yesterday. <laughs> so, um, who did the challenge last year? Because this, this isn't the encode computer, but this just actually starting to look like uh, another VM problem. So maybe we'll keep building uh, on top of this for the coming days. So what happened last year is that we had a int code computer that we were constructing like in the uh, on off days. So you had one day with int code, then a, a different problem, then you go back to int code and that would repeat and we would, would build a, a more elaborate machine every time. Okay, part two. After some careful analysis, you believe that exactly one instruction is corrupted. Somewhere in the program, either a jump is supposed to be a knob or a knob is supposed to be a jump. No ACC instructions were harmed in the corruption of this boot code. Okay. The program is supposed to terminate by attempting to execute an instruction immediately after the last instruction in the file. By changing exactly one G JMP or uh, knob, you can repair the boot code and make it terminate correctly. Okay, so we need to end up at the last line of the, uh, the, the file, so that is our target. <clears throat> Let's see, if you st change the first instruction from not plus to jump plus, it would create a single instruction infinite loop, never leaving that instruction. If you change almost any of the jump instructions, the program will still eventually find another jump instruction and loop forever. However, if you, you change the second to last instruction from jump min 4 to not min 4, the program terminates. The instructions are visited in this order. Mm. Okay. After the last instruction, ACC plus six, the program terminates by attempting to run the instruction below the last instruction in the file. And with this change, after the program terminates, the accumulator contains a value eight. Fix the program so that it terminates normally by X, uh, changing exactly one jump to knob or knob to jump. What is the value of the accumulator after the program terminates? Okay, so this is interesting. Um, I could either write some branching code um, that runs the code and just every jump or knob is switched and you see which one finishes without an infinite loop. That's kind of the brute force uh, way that I know I can probably do. Then there's also, but I have no idea how much instructions are in the list. So that's doable. Yeah, that's not horrible because there are just a few uh, branches, but still, how do you keep track of all of the, oh no, you can only change one. So, okay. Um, Another way would be to check out the last jump or knob operation before you hit the infinite loop and change that and go keep going back 
to the previous jump or a uh, knob operation uh, until it no longer uh, hits the infinite loop. So that might be smarter because the brute force way isn't... Uh <laughs> okay. Um, pum, 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 pum. So I'm just thinking, can I write something that just keeps like a stack trace and then after you hit an infinite loop, go back to the previous one and change it. Um, I think that's the way to go actually. So we'll build a queue, I think, int. Uh, no, that would be a stack int. Uh, stack. Okay. okay, let's see if I uh, can do this. Uh, bool uh, reverting is false. So int target is operations count operations dot length. Minus one. Uh, index unequal to target and okay. You're voicing all the thoughts I had as well. I just went with the brute force method in, in the interest of time. Yeah, I think the. I don't think it's that much more time to do it this way, and I think. This might be really cool to do, actually. At least I think it would be really cool to do. Uh, so let's put this in a day two, uh, day eight, part two function, part two. And let's not mess with this one right now. Uh, let's just preserve this as is. Okay, so reverting is false. So uh, target is uh, yes. Um, so let's see. Previously executed, it adds it. Um, so I, I added, I made this a, a hash set to make sure that the uh, contains lookup was fast. Um, so I'll just keep it like that. And just do add stack dot add okay. uh, push actually uh, index. Um, let's see um, int last bad op equals int dot max value. Let's see. Um, no, not you, Siri. Every time. I need to turn that off. So let me think. We have, So what I want to do is we go to uh, until... Uh, actually, we nest these loops. So we want to keep at this until we end up at our desired spot. Um, So, if index is uh, target, um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, changed op will be last bat index, last bat op result is result, okay. <coughs> else result before infinite loop at index blah so we do last bad uh, last bad op let's see this would be so um, let me think 
Wow. Um, pum, 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 pum. Wow. Stack dot count. Do I know this larger than uh, last that up uh, and stack the peak um, uh, revertible. I will do uh, JMP, not nope. uh, reverberable that contains stack.peak, and this will be. Uh, ah, I need to parse those. Let me just let me just parse everything into a command structure that I can reference it because we have to do that more than once now. So we'll do uh, list. Commands, uh, commands, yes, blah, blah. and we'll just uh, enumerate over everything right now. And we'll do it uh, like int offset. So I can do uh, for each. Actually, I can just do operations dot select. Uh, no, that's not <laughs> for each string operation and operations. I can do this, this, and then I can do commands. We'll have a input command, comma offset. Okay, so now we can address these by index and have it all parsed out and don't have to do that again. Let's just do it like that. Um, so we have this as the CMD. That okay. So at least we don't have to parse the same data twice now, which also lets us do uh, commands. This dot command. <coughs> um, No, I can just get it here. Uh, let's see. I, I'm just thinking I need to unwind. Because I, I will keep track of the last bad up. I will update it here and I will switch it out. Um, and I probably need to pass this to a function where I just give this so that I can modify it without uh, messing with the original data. Um, let's see. So I end up at an infinite loop at index here. So from there on, I go back until I find um, the first jump or knob lower than the last repeated uh, repeated thing. So to do while true, um, let's see uh, if stack dot length count um, larger equal um, if it's smaller than last that up uh, 
Bad. How do I draw it? Bad. Up. Let's see. Last bad. Up. Yes. Last bad. Up. Um, then I need to check. Else I can just do uh, unwind. So I always need to I actually need to unwind. Uh, but if uh, cd is uh, stack dot pop. Commands stack dot pop. Okay, so now I have the last executed command. Um, let's see, this index might not have been executed because it's wrong. No, because it will break if the index is already executed. So this is actually an executed command. So now we're walking backwards. We get the last executed command. Um, if it's smaller than, uh, we need to undo it. First of all, we need to undo it. <coughs> if it's uh, uh, smaller than the last bad op, we can say uh, and um, reversible dot contains stack dot uh, no, cmd dot command. So if this is actually a vertical command, we found our previously uh, our new uh, branching point. So now we do last bad up, last bad op equals to uh, stack dot. Oh no, I need to have the index here. Uh, okay, so int index uh, I can just I can just overwrite index here, but let's not refer the index. Okay, so we have reverted index here. And then we can say last bad op is reverted index. Okay. And now we can do break. And now we can go again. And what we have to do here is uh, if index equals to last bad op, um, go to case uh, jmp, go to case nope. Okay, so what we do here is um, actually go to a different switch case if we encounter the bad operation. So this should uh, make us do this. Uh, let's see. Um, boom, boom. This needs to be inside this loop. I want the int outside of it normally, but hey, it doesn't really matter that much for performance here. Um, so we have that. Let's say we could do console that right line. Um, found uh, possible that index at, and this will be uh, reverted index. Changing, not chatting, changing. And this will be uh, cmd dot command is gmp. So this will be knob. Uh, so this can be knob gmp. So let's see if this works. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I still need to write the reversing logic here. Um, so 
see this as min min. Is that the inverse? Same for this one and min min. So this should allow us to walk back. Um, I'm really curious to see if this works in one shot because it's pretty cool. Um, probably not, but let's let's try. Did you go with coffee or tea today? I went with um, uh, cappuccino. Yeah. Um, okay, but it exited. Wait, it exited. That means it's correct, right? Ah, oh, it worked actually. Wait, change op, last bad op, results. Wait. Okay, so the code worked, but this is like a, an overflow value or something. This can be the correct. <laughs> this would be uh, pretty, pretty crazy. Let's keep a, a no, that can't be. Let's uh, let's step through this. This is pretty. Uh, I probably need to to implement the uh, this example first. Okay. Um, I really like this challenge, by the way. So let's uh, let's just do this and step through it. And see if we can get the same uh, the same result as uh, what we expect. So our target equals eight uh, operations. That's right. Uh, wait. Yeah. So we have nine entries. Target index is eight. Boom! 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 So we add index zero. We push index zero, we get the command, and the command is a nop. That's okay. Actually, I could write out, uh, let's just say console.write line executing index. index. could do the same here. Reverting index. Uh, reverted index value is like that. Oh, this will also uh, let's see because this will pum 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 pum. Am I doing it correctly? This will be the value before it's inverted. Ah, I, I do something stupid here, right? Because if I do this correctly, the reverted index should be, it should align with index, right? Let's see. Um, Let me just check. Uh, Today was super fun. Yeah, I, I had an intermax. I, I can't debug your code for you, but the logic sounds. Uh, the logic should give you the answer. Yeah. Let's just see what this does. Executing index value is never incremented. Wait a second. Uh, 
Doesn't it never hit a... Ah, I think... Do I have a loop inside? No. Wait, what? Okay, let's jump through this. This is weird. Nope. Okay. Ah, last bad op never gets hit, so it never hits an infinite loop. Wait, what? Ah, I, I built the command list wrong because I need to reuse that. Okay, my bad. Uh, commands. Uh, that's stupid. Wait. Wait, what? Ah, here. I'm an idiot. I just split the first index here. Yeah. Unrelated bug. <laughs> Stack is lake. Okay. So what did it spit out? Let's see. Um, reverting that index now four. But it didn't list index five here. Passel join not one. Okay, I'm um, let's see. So it goes one, two, one, two, three, yes, and then it goes to uh, so. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's correct. Six, seven. Why does it jump to three after that? That would be the infinite loop, right? Executing index three, value two. Oh no, it doesn't go to six here, right? Ah, oh, that is if you change something. Yeah, okay. If you change the second to last from jump to knob, the program terminates. Okay, let's see. So what am I doing here? Because here I jump to three, four, So that had uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that would that would repeat again, right? Oh yeah, that one would make you jump back to one, two, three, two in the yes. So, okay, so this so far is correct. Let's see. And I had, let's see, last instruction. So that would remove the plus three, just do. Yeah, so that, okay, so that's still correct. So it has from two, then it should plus six, and then, okay. So the reverting code is, there is something wrong here. So phone possible bad index at four. This is the, uh, the jump minus three. So I do that to a knob. 
Let's see. Ah, but I need to branch at that stage, right? Because I walk backwards from that one. Uh, but I don't, I consider the new path from that one, but I don't need to do that. Mm. Let's see. Um. I'm just thinking that I should restart the loop and not walk backwards. That's probably better. Um, let me let me just try that for a second. Um, so I can just reset these. Um, okay, so let's see. Bad up is reverting index. Okay. Then we break, so we do result is zero, result uh, is index is zero, we reset, reset, and then we start again. I think that's better. Still an error. Wait. Result before infinite loop. Zero, zero. Ah, I also need to clear the, the, the visited path. Yes. Um, so now we just... I know this is a bit suboptimal, but it still has some advantages. Uh, let's see. We have the stack and we have the previously executed. So we clear those as well. So let's run that again. And now we have an infinite loop. Let's see. Last bad op is four. So let's see. Um, that was the, the one, right? So, one, two, three, four. No, that's not the, the incorrect one. It's this one that we need to change. So it arrives at this one. Let's see. I also don't need to do this actually because I, I reset anyways. But that also makes sure that the value isn't correct. Mm. Um, let me think. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, that this is stupid um, because they. <laughs> okay, that was a stupid mistake. Let's see. Um, we do uh, actually. This is a bit, a bit hacky, but this is the quickest way to make this work right now. Uh, JMP. Stack is empty. Okay, so I still mess up somewhere. So we have six. Bad index at two. Changing jump. Four to okay, that's that one. Why is that one the one that we encounter? Hmm. 
Hmm. Let me think. Don't bustle about in the yeah, so that's not not it. Um Ah, oh, my target never gets updated. Damn it. Um, or does it? No, that's that's still based off the length, so that's not it. Hmm, this shouldn't be this hard. Let's see. So we have a stack here of all the commands. So this is the, uh, actually, does it get pushed? No, it doesn't matter. Because um, this is the jump minus three that results in a loop, okay. So we, we go like, okay, this jump made it bad. Let's change it into a knob. Right. So, okay, now we go into this one. So let's set a breakpoint here. Actually, we want to get back here at the... That had ik al bedacht. <laughs> okay. So now we did it again. It didn't work. So now we should find the next reverted index. So we have a bad op. Ah, wait, stack bond count, that's not correct because it needs to be the reverted index. Needs to be. Uh, ah, I need to actually have the, the depth of the stack. Damn it. Yes. Um, last reverted stack depth equals max value. So that's what we needed to check here. Um, let's see if stack dot count smaller than last reverted stack depth. Um, let's see. So if we have four, we pop one. Squid at the code disapproving the. Oh, sorry. Why disapprovingly? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, last referred to stack depth. So it needs to be smaller than the last time. So this should. Okay, let's check that. Change up seven. And the value is two there. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boom. So now it works. Um, found possible bad index. Yes, executing two, two. Yes, so now it all worked. But did I get the actual value? Because the, the last uh, value execution didn't, because it says value two, but it still needs to do the ACC, I think. So I'm missing the last value change here. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go back here. And let's set a conditional breakpoint. They are really slow, but it doesn't matter for, for this case. Um, last bad op is seven. Let's just see what happens. So now we have last bad op is seven. Okay. We cleared everything. Okay. Ah, the, okay. This is this is my mistake here because we need to execute it actually, and we can do if 
equals target break. You need to break out of this loop and then out of the other loop. So this should be the result. Haha. Uh -huh. But it didn't work. Let's run it again. Why doesn't it? Okay, that's weird. I actually want to uh, go here. Condition um, index equals target. Yeah, sorry, I had the code partly off screen, I think. So sorry for doing that. So it never hits that part. Why? That's weird. Let's see. And then it ends up, okay, so the last time it does the knob, it increments the index. Ah, I need to, uh, let's see, is this, this index, let's see. Um, boom, 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 boom. Actually, no, it doesn't need this check either. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm dumb, sorry guys. Because what I did is find the index and then say, okay, I don't need to execute the last statement. No, I need to execute the last statement. Um, and then while that uh, and index smaller uh, equal to target. Because after that it will increment and uh, it will break there. Okay. Uh, let's see, because this will be target. Oh no, if we, oh man, okay. Let's see. We move to the in index. So after we execute that target, what is the best way to break out of it? So it should be if uh, index is target plus one. Oh. Break. Do I have all the cases covered now? No, still haven't covered it. Let's go back, because this is silly. Because it, it worked, it was correct, it just didn't uh, spit out the right value there. So if it's... Yeah, I can just set my command here. So index, uh, index is set to the target but now it actually needs to execute that target. So it doesn't need to. Okay, so now index is target plus one. And then I can break. Ah, oh yeah, I need, oh man. So if index is uh, target plus one, break, if index target plus one, blah. Because this is the final state. So I should probably set not target, but uh, the target is actually the last 
it's just operations.length. It's the one index outside that we don't want to be in. Okay. These off by one things. Right, okay, change up seven, we get eight. Damn, finally. Whew. So let's go back. I'm sorry for the, <laughs> the, the small little bugs, but I'm glad that I finally got it. Change up 345, the value is this. So let's hope this works now. Yes! Oh man, I'm always so happy when I get it right. <laughs> nice. So let's see at our stack trace, so to call it. Uh, it's utting, not putting, or is it scrolling? Oh, okay. So how many Let's see, can we count how many steps it had to undo? How many times it had to uh, rewind? Let's see, um, bum, bum, bum. int unwind count is zero. Six times, okay. I'm just having it spit out so much data, but uh, yeah. Nice, thanks, yeah. Oh man, I'm really happy that uh, that this worked and that it didn't become like a, a, a long struggle. Uh, so yeah. So everybody else that uh, solved it, uh, we already heard Comgeek uh, saying that he went with the brute force approach. Um, how did you do the brute force approach? Did you just branch off uh, at each possible part and calculate all the things with copies of the, the stack trace, etc.? I'm, I'm thinking this um, should scale and not, not run up the memory because you just go back. I really might want to... Ah, let's see. I might want to go back and do the undo method properly as well. Uh, let's see. Puzzle seven part two. Okay. It fits on one tiny little screen. <laughs> yeah, mine doesn't. Let's see. So the idea of grabbing the instruction you know the code will hit is good, but I think doing them uh, last first is actually worse than first first. Okay. Wait, so the idea of grabbing the instructions you know the code will hit is good, but I think doing them last first is actually worse than first first. But if you do, if you start from the front, um, Oh yeah, it's still linear because it doesn't the, the branching doesn't really matter. Hmm. Well, in the end you don't really know which and um wh uh, on which end the problem lies. So I don't think it doesn't uh, it matters that much there. So why would it be worse to start from the back? Because I'm trying to go over it in my head and I don't see the, the reason why uh, the last would be worse. I think the, the walking back would be more straightforward. Uh, the, 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 fi the, the retries would be more straightforward to just take the first one you encounter. I'm not seeing a, a problem there. Let's see. All the codes. Uh, let me finish looking at this one first. Uh, let's see. Walk operations. Puzzle 7 part 2. Let's see. Please, yeah, copy operations. Yeah, okay. You create new. 
Okay, so you changed every... <laughs> this is really brute force. So you changed um, every operation to just be a knob and see if it works. So what if there was actually a knob that you had to change to a jump? Because that was possible too, right? It, it wasn't in this case, but they said that you uh, had to switch both. But uh, you would find it easy enough, I think. Let's see. But yeah, th this certainly works as well. Um, let's see, what do we have here? We have solve, operations, argument, instructions. Find infinite loop, sure. Visited instructions, failed attempts, instruction index, visited instructions. Okay, you skip the ACCs. So you switch all of them. Wait, ah, okay, now you just change one of them, right? No, wait, you change you change all of them in the list? So, um, there's are no. Uh, am I reading this correctly, that you change all the instructions from, uh, that you invert all of the instructions? Because you, you loop through the instructions here, and then you do the inverse for JMPs and, and knobs. Let's see, instructions. Ah, no, I see it. Uh, you just, you loop, this is your outer loop and just all the, for all the things that you executed, you try to find more. And if you don't encounter an infinite loop, you, uh, ah, okay. Okay, also works. Let's see, we had another submission of code. By the way, while I have you all here, uh, I try to do uploads to YouTube of these videos uh, with edited annotations. Um, so you can, Check it out here. A, uh, hey, I climbed to 45 already. Nice. So uh, check it out if you want, uh, and you maybe you may even see your code there. So let's see. AOC the eight uh, parse data part one. Okay. Let's see data list. If it's not ACV, cycle through data list too. Okay. Uh, it's the same approach as uh, Tazarno had, right? You just loop through all the statements and once you found one, you try and go through it. Okay. Okay. Nice. So I'm a snowflake today. <laughs> but I, uh, I like the way that I did it, to be honest. But uh, it's a lot more... Uh, I don't know if it's a lot more code, but it's more code. So I had fun today. I hope uh, everybody that joined me had fun as well. So let's check out somebody to rate and uh, I hope to see you guys uh, tomorrow. Oh man, I get that commercial so many times. Hey everybody, I just wanted to record a quick thank you. I just got done editing with this video, which took seven or eight hours just going through it, adding small stuff. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for watching. If you liked it, please uh, leave a like, a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and maybe join me tomorrow on Twitch because I've been doing this every day live on Twitch. So if you want to see if I uh, can make it next day, come say hi on Twitch. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description. Bye bye. Thank you.